Hey, how are you doing? This is George Witten. I just wanted to share real quickly my thoughts of what, what's happening in Israel. The title of this little mini episode is called Riots, Strikes, and the Possible Government Collapse. Uh, for those that are not aware, the state of Israel is kind of in a major flux of riots in the streets. The government shut down. And it all began with um, it, the Israeli Defense Minister Yoav Gallant basically calling for the halt of judicial reform. He basically said this when uh, just after uh, Benjamin Netanyahu gave his speech on Thursday night. He, Net, Benjamin Netanyahu was calling for um, peace and order in the streets. Gallant uh, canceled his plan statement on Thursday after uh, he expected Netanyahu to freeze the plan, but Netanyahu did not freeze the plan. So he came out with a speech on uh, Saturday night, and he said, The growing rift in our society is penetrating the IDF and security agencies. This poses a clear, immediate, and tangible threat to the security of the state, and I will not lend my hand to this. And Gallant called for the, the halt of the legislative process, he called for talks with the opposition, and he actually called for the halting of protests in the streets. But the reality was that the protesters used this to go ahead and go to the streets. Why? Because Benjamin Netanyahu then says, "Look, you acted alone. You you didn't even you didn't even share with me. You didn't coordinate with me ahead of time, and you actually are sabotaging our efforts to find a solution in the judicial reform they're trying to press." Gallant is concerned why he says in his statement that Iran is close to military nuclear capability. The northern front is, uh, you know, unquiet. So the, the front with Lebanon is uh, tenuous. The, the situation with Palestinian terror is growing and it is continuing to become um, a problem. And so he then says, look, the IDF has been damaged. And it's been damaged because there's a phenomenon going on that the reserve army personnel are refusing to report. They're refusing to report for duty and uh, because of this legislation. So that led to uh, rioting in the streets after Netanyahu fired him. While Gallant actually called for the end of rioting, and this has been the, the 12th week going into rioting. Now, everyone talks about a constitutional crisis. There is actually no constitution in Israel. They have a, a situation called the, the basic laws. And over the last uh, 20 years, but specifically in the last 10 years, you had a Supreme Court that was actually hijacking a lot of legislation. So um, it all started with Israeli Supreme Court Justice um, Barak, who basically in 1998 uh, was started using the Supreme Court and the power of the Supreme Court to cancel laws that were actually passed by a, a, a vote, a, a democratic elected legislative body, the Knesset. And in doing so, he was actually usurping legislation that had been passed. And in doing so, it actually offended uh, a lot of the um, those in the right, because a lot of their legislation has been passed, especially in the last five years. As this has been going on, um, the right said, well, we need to pass legislation. However, in my personal opinion, they went a little too far because um, they were trying to pass legislation in one sense to 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 have a unanimous uh, you know coalition of justices, 15 justices to unanimously come together to overturn a law that the Knesset passed. But then the Knesset had the ability to overturn them again with just a simple vote. So it was a situation where um, this particular sticking point was uh, rubbing a lot of people the wrong way, you know, in my opinion, that I thought it was going too far. Now, I do agree with Benjamin Netanyahu and the, uh, the, um, the changing up of how judges are elected, because what it did allow or what it was, was creating was a situation where um, justices and, and judges were coming in in their own little cliques. And so you actually had a, a small clique of people that were usurping all of democracy. So the irony is as the protesters are going to the streets and they're, and they're protesting, and this is the end of democracy, it actually is going back to a time, it's the end of, it's how Israel was run before 1998. And no one complained about democracy from 1948 when the state of Israel was founded all the way to, you know, 2000 or until 1998 for 40 years. Now, the head of um, 
the head of the Histradrut called for a general strike. That is like the, the general labor union of Israel. And so what you had was strikes happening in Ben Gurion Airport. You had every shopping mall closed down today. You had uh, doctors you know, shutting down their offices unless it was an emergency. You had schools shut down. And so basically it was paralyzing the entire nation. And this actually caused um, Benjamin Netanyahu to come um, the, to come to the streets. Whoops, let me go back to this transition. And he basically called for, Benjamin Netanyahu came on a speech this morning. He called for an overhaul of judicial reforms. And uh, he said, let's sort of take a pause. I will say this, I believe that it showed a weakness. I think Benjamin Netanyahu should have actually pulled back when the protests were starting, before it got to the place that it is now. And now it's at a place where now he looks weak. It looks like now the mob has orchestrated itself in such a way that it, it, it shows now in the future, hey, all we need to do is get a huge mob and we can go ahead and stop the government. Uh, I think it gave a, a wrong signal and it probably will lead to another set of elections. In Israel, you only need 61 Knesset members out of 120. You only need a simple majority to say they do not have confidence in the government and then call for a vote of no confidence. The coalition is only held by 64 seats right now. 64 out of 120 is what is creating the coalition. You only need one of the small parties, one of the small parties that thinks Netanyahu is acting weak to go ahead and bring forth a, a vote of confidence. We have elections all over again, and we're, we're, we're recycling this situation. This is causing the Arab nations around to see the weakness of Israel. And they're actually calling to, to hey, let's not strike. Let's, let's hold back. And they're seeing Israel actually implode. However, this is really not the implosion of Israel. This is the, the political instability that um, Israel has been facing for a long, long time. So um, I will say that the, the, the more shocking thing was um, that inside of the religious circles in Israel, this basically said, hey, look, all these issues and all these reforms just proves that we need the Mashiach. Now, they've rejected that Jesus, that Yeshua is the Messiah, and they're actually preparing themselves for a false Messiah. And there's a lot of events happening within the Orthodox communities that they see that a temple is coming soon. They see that the, the Messiah is coming soon. They see uh, the beginning of the red heifers as a sign. There's a lot of things that we covered in a video over the weekend called Red Heifers, the Coming Temple, and the Great Delusion. I suggest you stay, spend about the 25 minutes to watch that video. It's, it's really critical to understanding the, the day that we're in. But we need to be praying for the nation of Israel. Obviously, it's in a state that's, that's very... Um, it's in a fragile state. It's surrounded by you know millions of Muslims that would love to see Israel vanquished. And uh, we need to be praying for the peace of Jerusalem. It says in Isaiah that I've set a watchman on your walls of Jerusalem. And they will not stop. They will not cease to pray day and night until Jerusalem is a praise in all the earth. So my hope is that you start praying more earnestly for the, the peace of Jerusalem. And start praying more earnestly for the opening of the eyes of the Jewish people to the truth of their Messiah that has already come 2,000 years ago. Until next time, this is George Witten reporting with Worthy News.